people see the difference. People are not blind. The most damaging thing to their country is corruption. Last year, uh, the United Nations Office of Drug Control came out with a survey and they said 60% of the Afghans believed that the number one problem was corruption. It wasn't the Taliban, it wasn't terrorism, it wasn't the economy. It's uh, the average uh, Afghan who is extremely disappointed with the government, uh, with the government's performance and the fact that uh, everyone in the government, from the lowest uh, officials to uh, the highest public authorities, they seem to be on the take. I have not heard too many people in our countries around the world say that they think corruption is a good idea. Corruption of, uh, since 2001 is, has, uh, uh, with each passing year, it's increasingly on the agenda of uh, uh, policymakers, uh, both within Afghanistan as well as academics, intellectuals, but most importantly for the average person in Afghanistan. People always say, you know, that corruption um, is the thing that must be battled, and that must be fought, so that they can have a life. It breeds dissent, it breeds major problem as one aspect, in, in addition to poverty. But the other one is, of course, that it very often is working and seeding uh, criminal activities. The more our people f recognize that there is corruption somewhere, the less uh, support they're going to give to our operations. If people have to bribe uh, the judge uh, or bribe the judge to get, you know, a, a different ruling or are stopped by the police all the time, they don't feel protected. Fighting against corruption is a very important part, a crucial part uh, of, the, of the transition we're engaging now for, for Afghanistan. And this is also a reason why we in Allied Command Transformation, we devote so much time in, uh, in training people also in, uh, in this field of building integrity and anti-corruption. For the average Afghan living in uh, the villages in southern Afghanistan or eastern Af Afghanistan, there really isn't any alternative to uh, the Taliban. Ideally, the alternative would be the Afghan government forces. Okay, but if they are so utterly corrupt, then uh, how can the average Afghan trust uh, the Afghan uh, security forces and especially uh, the Afghan uh, police to provide uh, security for them? And that's how you directly link corruption to the expansion of uh, the Taliban's influence. After the fall of the Taliban, the priority was given to the army. But now the international community has realized this. There's a lot of uh, emphasis on, on the police. And, uh, and we have been seeing recently, for example, the latest report the other day was showing that uh, popularity of the police has increased by 10 percent. Well, we've talked about the marathon race. You know, in many ways the army had a, a five or six mile head start. It's not that it's all that much more difficult as we're just so far ahead with the army vice the police. Much of that's because NATO and many of the countries are familiar with working with the army. It's taken longer to get the police online, but uh, we've had some huge successes in the last year with police. Take care. When people see them, the population in other sectors and the civil society, um, other sectors of the government, when they see that okay, NSF is doing very well, then uh, they, they look to them as a model. Uh, they can automatically be, be inspired and motivated to follow suit. When the military is seen uh, to do procurement and purchases on a fair basis, on an honest basis, people see that this is an organization that's there that they can look up to. If you look at uh, the training of uh, the Afghan police, you know one, one of the biggest problems has been that you know a, a lot of them simply don't know how to read and write. Okay, so I mean all those things where you have to instill a, a certain level of education, which would allow them to be trained, uh, you know, like map reading and all those other important um, aspects. That comes through efforts over a number of years. The problem of narcotics, the problem of corruption, and poor governance. I mean, all of them can uh, be to a large extent sorted out by capacity building and education for, of the future generations. So it's important to get the structures right so you can make sure that behavior matches what your beliefs are. Fighting against corruption is absolutely not only a military uh, issue, far from it. Uh, everybody understands it. We are just one actor in a very, very comprehensive uh, topic. 
I would say the main tool is uh, ingraining the right mindset uh, in the people, proving that things can be done otherwise, and making sure that the people we talk to share the same values as we have. We've talked this week about the fact that, you know, that corruption in Afghanistan may be cultural. I just don't buy that. I think corruption is a, uh, an issue of practice, not of culture. I think most Afghans, if you ask them what cor uh, corruption is, they understand it. They don't want it. If as some people say that the corruption is integral to the Afghan government, so we shouldn't be harping on that aspect, uh, you know, uh, over and over again. But then, if it was uh, so integral to the Afghan uh, way of life then why are the Afghan people so upset about corruption? All these regional players will be emboldened. They will be motivated. They will say, okay, that's the last, the last threat for us, for our benefits, for our interests was the Western world and the international community, and now they have been defeated. They have left, so, so this is us now. And, and that, that will be, I think, the worst nightmare for everybody in the world. If things are not reversed, then um, they would simply just break off parts of Afghanistan, turn, turn it into their fiefdoms, rule like uh, warlords, uh, drug trafficking is likely to increase. One of the problems with corruption is, corruption can cause a existential threat to the Afghan government. If that is reversible, this transition, and uh, you find that the government does fall because of the problems that exist in corruption, I think it could cause us to fail on our mission. We want it to long-term sustain. So I think because we could potentially fail because of corruption, it potentially poses an existential threat to NATO.